what's up everybody on today's video we're going to revisit a video that i did with the kids um i guess it was a few months ago now i've been pretty busy with uh, school stuff uh, school stuff finals holidays new semester starting so it's been a while i've been wanting to do this for a while before all the snow fell but hey you know it's what we got so it's what we're gonna deal with so the video i did with the kids a few months ago was over how to cook out on a camping trip we didn't really get into a whole lot. It was mostly just cooking eggs with a propane stove, which is still good. Um, it was mostly for teaching the kids how to do it and giving them a little camera time because they want to feel like they're a big deal because they are a big deal. <laughs> but here's a few things I just, I wanted to hit on real quick that didn't get to make it into that video. So first now, okay, so we're talking about food prep for a camping trip or a hunting trip, hiking trip, kayaking, whatever you're doing. In this context, we're talking car camping. Now, now, I mean, you might not be camping in your car, sleeping in your car, but car camping is the general term for not primitive camping. You know, as in your camp not too far from your parking area. So it's not too primitive. So when it comes to car camping, you're really only limited by your imagination and how much work you want to put into it. When it comes to food, at least, there's really not that much difference between preparing food at home in your kitchen and preparing food out on the trail uh, at, a, at an improved campsite. You've got stoves, you've got ice chests, you've got a chuck box, which you, you use as your kitchen. There's really not a whole lot of difference. So we'll get into it real quick. Now, obviously, as with everything, you want to plan and prep everything in advance. I should have said in advance. I felt like <laughs> that went without saying, but you want to prep everything in advance. Before you prep everything, you wanna plan everything. Now again, that goes into trip planning, how long you're gonna be gone, how many people are with you, whether or not there's water at your destination, how much of this stuff you're gonna to have to bring, how much um, is provided, you know, perhaps by the campsite itself. So you're gonna plan everything. Now, when I say prep everything, I mean, as much as you can, get all your meals ready beforehand. If you're gonna be making hamburgers one day, go ahead and get your the meat already uh, seasoned and put into a Ziploc bag beforehand. So whenever it comes time to make that meal, you're just pulling the meat out, forming it and putting it on the grill. And then all you have to do is toss the Ziploc bag in the trash when you're done. If, if one of your menu items calls for uh, chopped up vegetables, then go ahead and chop those vegetables at home in your kitchen at home. So you're not having to do it potentially out in the wind or in the cold or if you're pressed for time when you're actually out there. You wanna do everything as much as possible before you even get in the car to head out. Now, I've also written here, freeze it if you can. This is something that's kind of new to me. We never did this when I was in uh, Scouts. We just packed everything. If it, if it needed to be cold, we put it in an ice chest and it went cold. This is mostly for if you're gonna be gone for several days, like maybe like a week long trip. If you can freeze it, go ahead and freeze it. But if you know when you're going to use it, say if I'm freezing this Kool-Aid for, you know, for what we're gonna drink on day four, then have it frozen and pull it out to thaw out on day three. So by the time day four gets here, it's already you know thawed and ready to go. Freezing it ahead of time, that will just help keep everything around it fresh. It will help keep the ice in your ice chest colder or longer. If you're going to try to avoid using a stove, then you want to try to cook over as much as possible over coals, not the fire. When you picture camping and when you picture cooking on an open fire, everybody pictures cooking over the fire itself. But coals are a lot more, you're going to get a lot more steady, a lot more consistent heat. Uh, the flame is going to be up and down, up and down. It's going to get blown around with the wind. It's going to be not nearly as consistent. You might get hot spots here, cold spots here. Something might be done over here, but still raw over here. So you want to keep that in mind before you even start your cooking, make sure you have some good coals already prepared. Now, if you're cooking on a stove, then disregard all that. But another thing uh, that goes with plan and prep everything, you want to know how to use everything before you step off. You want to rehearse as much as possible, everything possible. If you've got a propane stove like this, make sure you take it out and unpack it and hook up the propane, you know, cook a meal or two with it before you even step off so you know how to use it. If you're using a grill like this that goes directly over the fire, directly over the coals, 
again that's also great but you want to you know know how to use it know how high above the coals to set this thing if you need to like dig it down into the ground at all you want to know where on uh, the cooking surface to put where you're cooking okay so long story short as much as possible cook on coals don't cook over the fire now I put double duty here. The one limitation that you do have when car camping versus um, cooking at home is the amount of space you have. But again, you're only really limited by your imagination. So I like this cooking pot right here can also be used as a mixing bowl. Just like little stuff like that. I have a bunch of mixing bowls in my house and I also have a bunch of cooking pots. You can use a cooking pot as a mixing bowl and then clean it out later. Okay, so I also put proper storage here. So this is for at night or between meals when you're not using something. Um, if you've got a chuck box, make sure everything is inside the chuck box. If you're camping like literally out of the car, out of your truck, put everything back in the truck. That's to keep wildlife away from your food and out of your business. If you're gonna go off on a hike, you don't wanna come back and find your, you know, your food's been torn into. So properly store chuck box, put it in your vehicle. If you've got a bear bag or if you're in an area for which a bear bag might be necessary, uh, Toss your food up in the tree with a bear bag. Okay, I don't know if you can tell, it's starting to snow on me, so I'm gonna get back inside real quick. But a couple more notes. Make sure you keep everything as clean as possible. There should be somebody designated for each meal to clean all the pots and pans and everything after that meal is over. In Boy Scouts, we called it KP. For every meal that we did in Boy Scouts, there were at least two guys who, for it was their job to clean everything after the meal was over. So you had boys who were in charge of cooking that meal and boys who were in charge of cleaning all the dishes. Okay, one last thing I wanna hit on real quick because it is starting to snow, so I need to get out of here. I checked out a few different websites that dealt with camping, uh, cooking on the trail before doing this video. Most of them said the same basic stuff. However, a few of them suggested, you know, in, in the spirit of making things easier on yourself, instead of bringing the real butter, if you're gonna, if you're gonna be cooking with butter, bring the squeeze butter or the spray stuff. Now, uh, I'm not gonna tell you not to do that, but I personally do not do that because that stuff is all super unhealthy. It's all vegetable oils, partially and fully hydrogenated vegetable oils and stuff that's just really not natural. It's not meant to be in your body. Your body doesn't know how to digest that stuff. And I'm not a doctor, I'm not a dietitian, but there is a direct correlation between the rise in those um, artificial vegetable oils and the rise in obesity and all these different types of cancer that have been become so prevalent in the last several decades. As much as possible, avoid that stuff. Bring, you know, I know it might be more of a hassle, more of a pain in the butt, but I mean, it, it's also your health you're talking about. Avoid the processed vegetable oils as much as possible. And that's just, that's not on a camping trip. That's just in general in life. That stuff is terrible for you. That is literally directly contributing to the obesity epidemic in America right now. And people are going for convenience over what's best for them and for their children. So, okay, I'm done with that little rant right now. Just personally, I, you know, it's, it's fairly common to see camping kitchens with like the squeeze butter. And yeah, it is easier, but it's also horrible for you. So please don't do that. I'm not gonna say not to, but no. <laughs> okay, it is starting to snow heavier on me now, so I'm gonna get out of here. But I just, I wanted to hit over these things real quick because I didn't get to do it in the video that I did with the kids. Um, stay tuned for more videos and stay warm.